Does your E46 sound like this? Let's fix that. Whoa, what up? I'm Chris. This is my E46 BMW, and I'm going to be changing my idler and tension pulleys and stuff on this car. When's the last time y'all changed yours? Probably never. I got my pulley that goes down there by the AC pump. That's the tensioner for the AC belt. I have my idler pulley. This goes by your alternator. And I'm not going to be changing this on this car because I did that about a week ago. This one's from my other E46. I have a video where I changed the alternator on the other car and I was pretty in depth. Besides, it's just one little bolt and a notch. I can figure that one out. I'm going to be doing a lot of work on the other car real soon and this goes on that one. I already did this one because they sent them to me at different times. And the hydraulic pulley. Now, this one some of these cars came with a mechanical pulley, some came with a hydraulic pulley, has the hydraulic on it. And it's hard to tell what car, what your car has. There's the tensioner, I keep saying pulley, that's the pulley. I can't find a definitive answer, but a lot of places say that they did away with the mechanical pulley and ended up going in a hydraulic one. So all the newer E46s have hydraulic ones. And I understand they could be swapped out. I you can take a look. Matter of fact, let's see. If you look down here, and I know y'all not going to be able to see it, but in between the hose down there, you can't see it on there, but this is situated like, like this, and I could make out the top of this down there. So I know mine's hydraulic because I could see it, and if you look online at pictures of hydraulic ones, and mechanical ones they do not look alike they don't go on the same way but I can kind of make out the top of it down there and I just got off of work so all this is hot but I can see the top of it you could be able to see the top of yours too that's the top if it looks like this it's hydraulic if it doesn't it's mechanical the reason I'm doing this is when I start my car up you can hear a very distinctive whirring spinning noise it's the bearings from those tensioners and pulleys they're going out, and if those things go bad, it could take your belts with it, your other pulleys. I mean, that runs your, your water pump, your alternator, your power steering. So now you're stuck on the side of the road with a car that you can't steer, is dead and overheating. So change these things out. I'm going to start the car up, and let's see if we can hear this noise. Sometimes it's louder than other times. I don't know what y'all are picking up, if the camera can hear it. I can hear it a little bit. It's not as distinctive as sometimes early in the morning, especially when it's cold. My car is hot right now because I just got home from work, so probably warmed it up a little bit but I don't want that stuff to blow up while I'm on my way to or from work so I'm about to change them out right now first step is to remove your air intake which is held together by how many other clips your car still has right here after that's off then the air box right here is held on by two clips back here by your air hose and two 10 millimeters right here. Now you got a little room to work. Now if you got an automatic then you got a mechanical fan right there so you gotta get this fan shroud off to have access to the front of the engine. This little box right here is just clipped in. This little connection here is just clipped in. You got a T25 right here and another plastic tab right here. And you undo those and that'll get your fan shroud off. 
well, you, it'll be stuck around your fan, but I got a trick with mine I'm going to show you. Normally, you have to take your fan and your fan shroud off all together because your fan shroud goes around your fan. But, if you're going to work on your car a lot, like I do, I cut mine. And if you cut it just right, this piece right here stabs in the bottom on this side, and this piece right here stabs on the bottom on this side, so it still holds tight. But now I can take the fan shroud off around the fan. I don't have to do take the fan off with it. It makes it much easier to get in and out of there. So that is something that you should probably think about doing. Giving it a little cut right here and a little cut right here. Now I have much easier access to getting in and out of there. Fan shroud out of the way. I'm trying to set up some lights and readjust y'all so y'all can see. I got these tools right here and this goes on the nuts that are on your water pump and this goes on your fan blade and it's going to spin clockwise to get it off. It's reverse threaded. So, so down there you can see the nut that this goes on and those little nuts right there that's where this tool it's definitely hard to hold the camera and point down there but this is going to go on those nuts on your water pump and I'm going to have to set y'all down so I can take this and line it up and I'm just going to turn it and break that loose sometimes it's hard to get this lined up just right I think I got it right now this top hose gets in the way so you have to kind of come in at an angle but once you get on there that's it now the fan is loose and I could spin it and take it off fan out now that I got the fan out and I got a light right there you can kind of see this a little better right there is the hydraulic tensioner it's right here that's exactly how it is I can't really get the camera down there but you can see the ridge on it back here this top ridge and you can look down there and you can make out that it is definitely the hydraulic tensioner and not the mechanical tensioner sit right there this is your I know it just got dark there my hands mess up the focus that's the idler that I'm not changing and the other one I'm changing is way down there let's get to this thing first I just want y'all to know it is really difficult to set the camera up and the light up so that we could all see everything we're doing I'm gonna pop this cap off of here it's just a dust cap your car might not even have those anymore matter of fact I didn't even want to pop that one off wrong one Let's pop the cap off of this one. There it goes. That is a T50. Yeah, your little star bit. That is a T50. And that is how we loosen the belt. that pulled I can take the belt off and it's a good idea to maybe take a picture of your belts and it's fine I'm gonna put up a belt diagram just so y'all can see how these belts go now the belts off of there I could work in peace right here well that's not supposed to spin freely like that wait a minute belts in the way that is not supposed to spin so freely See how that one stops? Because this is a good one. Matter of fact, that's not supposed to really wobble like that. And you can kind of hear the noise that I was hearing. This is a 13 millimeter. And I think I'm going to have to get underneath the car to reach some of the other stuff. Let's take that off. I'm not going to make y'all watch me unratchet this whole thing. 
after taking that top bolt off right there, you can look at the new tensioner and see that there's going to be a bolt right here and another one right here. The bottoms, they're both 13 millimeter. You stick your hand down there and feel around, you can feel them. So you're just going to have to go in with your 13 millimeter, feel around, and get those off of there. I mean, I suppose you could jack the car up and go in from underneath, but I just had the 13 millimeter on there, so it is possible to do it from the top. And I really don't want to climb underneath the car. See, look, I'm on it right now. And when I let it go, it's going to fall. But I'm going to put it on my ratchet and I'm going to take that off. I felt around and took the bottom nut out, but something I'm realizing now is if I stick this 50 back in here, this T50, and undo this wheel right here, I can get it out the way and have a much easier time of feeling around to finding the nut that's right back here. So, let's get this out of the way first. So yeah, you have to take that pulley off. Look at mine all rusty. Because that bolt is partially obscured by this pulley being in the way. Uh, wrong place. With that pulley on there, you would be able to get to that nut back there. It's directly on side of it right behind it so yeah now I got that I'm gonna take that last bolt off also a 13 millimeter and then this hydraulic tensioner will slide right out guess what I just found out you cannot remove the hydraulic tensioner without removing your idler pulley first because it's in it's in the way it's backing it up and that is just held on by one 5 8 or 16 millimeter bolt same size so that one bolt will take that idler pulley off which I changed about a week ago and then I'll be able to slide the hydraulic tensioner off right there and I'll be able to put the new stuff back on it'll be done I'm sure y'all don't want to see a long video that's just me loosening and tightening bolts so I'm editing past all that but with that long ass bolt out the way I can now pull my hydraulic tensioner out I hope something's still holding it right now let me get two hands on that well, that was really quick I saw the problem almost immediately right down there kinda hard to see on there but right here at the bottom of the hydraulic there's one more 13 millimeter bolt down there Everything's greasy and it's dark, but right there is one more 13 millimeter bolt holding that on. I am not a mechanic, I'm just somebody that can't afford to bring my car to a mechanic. I work on everything myself, and I can figure it all out. Let's get y'all down there, see how I can see. I'm undoing this last bolt now, and look, it's falling out. Try not to lose the bolts. There's a couple of different length bolts here. Hope y'all been keeping track of what came out of where. This is crusty. Yeah, look at that. I don't think that's supposed to wobble like that. So that's all loose right here. The new one does not wobble. You got a bushing inside of there, keeps it from wobbling. So that's been part of my noise. So I'm going to slide this right back in. I need two hands to do that. But pretty much reverse of the way I put it, took it out. I'm going to put that bottom bolt in first, then the bolt back here, then the bolt up here, and then uh, I'm going to put the wheel in. So yeah. Whoa, I want to point out a mistake I just found, a mistake I made. I just put this back on. I got all the bolts in there tightened up, three bolts. Now I undid four bolts. And I, when I first tried to take it off, it's because I thought I had this bolt off. And I had to go back and it was still there. This one right down here it was still on there. It's because when I went down there, there's actually a 13 millimeter right next to it. And it's dark down here. I undid this 13 millimeter right here which is for your power steering pump and I pulled that one out 
while trying to get this off. But I found a mistake, and it's it's not a problem. People make mistakes as long as you catch it. So my hydraulic tensioner is back on. Now I can put the idler tensioner back on, idler pulley, and this pulley on, and put the belts back on, and that part will all be done. Then I just got to get the one down there. So I got the new hydraulic tensioner on, got the wheel back on, everything's tightened. I just went back and looked at the video to see how I made that mistake of taking the wrong bolt out down there. So while I was feeling around in the dark, trying to reach under and just couldn't see everything. So very easy mistake to make. Um, if I wasn't filming, a lot, I make a lot of mistakes while trying to film and get the right angles and put the camera to the side and make sure I record things. A lot of people would edit all that out. I'm going to leave it right there. The idler pulley. It's going to go right back here next to your alternator. Let me show you. There is a notch. If it focuses, there's a notch right there. And that notch only fits one way on there. I know you can't see it from here, but there's a notch on there. So there's no way to make a mistake on putting this in. So I'm going to tighten that back into place, and that's how you change the idler pulley, and that's how you change the hydraulic tensioner. Let me tighten that up, and then we'll put the belts on. New pulley and tensioner is on, and to put the belts on, you're just going to stick that T50 back in your new hydraulic tensioner, and pull on it. And it'll move, and I'm going the wrong way. And I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a picture of a diagram right here, and you'll be able to look at the diagram and put your belt on. And once you do that, this whole part's done. Belt is back on. Now for this side over here, I'm going to try and do this with one hand. Right here, I'm going to knock this dust cover off, like that. And that is a T50 again. Take that T50 and drop it down in the engine bay but you'll be able to stick that right there and loosen it up and get this belt off. So, I'm not going to edit that out. Let me dig that out of there and get that belt off. So the belt is off, and once again, if you feel around underneath it, right there, that is a 5 8 or a 16 millimeter. Just undo it and that piece is going to come right off. And that's how you change that. Let me get that off. So I just pulled this tensioner out, just the one bolt in the middle. Look how crusty it is. Pretty bad looking. And listen. Is that what your car sounds like while it's running? It's kind of what mine sounded like. That's why I'm changing my tensioners. Here's the new one. You'll notice it doesn't even completely spin. Because this one's got good bearings in it. So, that one 5 8 or 16 millimeter bolt, put that right back in. Job done. That tensioner is now on and the belts are back on and tight. And how many times have I said all done when in reality none of those times was I done? Because I still got to put the fan, the fan shroud, and the air box back on. Then I'm done. But y'all don't want to see me putting that together, so... All right, now it's all done. I'm saying it and I mean it. Start the car up, make sure belts don't go flying everywhere, make sure it ain't making any weird noises because I got to drive just to work in the morning. Sounds good to me. Now we all done.